Hey guys, so it's been a long time. I'm sorry. I read the comments. I know it's been a while that I was supposed to finish this series. Things came up, I'm gonna explain. Uh, but yeah, so, man, there's so many things to talk about in this video. I think uh, four, four big things. First of all, I really do apologize for, you know, starting the series and then stopping cold turkey uh, without saying anything and just, uh, you know, not being very active, uh, you know, just after starting a series. And I'm going to explain why. I started the series and I stopped. And the reason for that was last year, I guess I stopped. I was just looking at it now. And the last part that I put up was in September 2017. And now we're September 2018. So it's a year ago. And, you know, I had some time at that time to record. Obviously, I'm doing a lot with this company uh, on top of being the CEO and managing it. But, you know, coaching the traders, trading myself, programming, all of that stuff. Uh, I got super busy and I had to cut out a few things. And the things I had to cut out were, were unfortunately making YouTube videos, uh, even though I wanted to do them. And there was other things I really hated doing. Uh, you know, business-wise, this is the thing that I had to, like, uh, cut down on. Now, why did I get so busy? Last year, we were, and I think it ties in really well with what we're doing now, because I got really busy because I was programming something for the last year. I got really busy because last year, even though we were doing a lot of uh, 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 cryptocurrencies, we didn't have a cryptocurrency software for ourselves. So we've decided... Uh, because mainly we're trading stocks, but cryptocurrencies was something we started trading. And uh, we saw that there was a lot of inefficiencies in the market. So we had decided to create our own cryptocurrency trading software. So I started coding that and it was just taking way, way longer than expected. You know, in cryptocurrencies, you have so many exchanges with different prices. So you have to connect so many exchanges. And actually, in the end of this video, we're going to go through that software. I'm going to show you a little bit of the code and a little bit of what it looks like. So you see what I'm talking about. Uh, but it just took so long to code. And uh, it was, at one point, it was me and another programmer, so we were two. So all the free time that I had, I was putting it into coding, and I was coding, like, nonstop, every weekend, every night. So it took a lot of time. So that being said, I apologize for not continuing, but um, I have more time now. So as of this moment, I... I'm going to do two videos per week minimum. Okay, so I'm committing to doing at least two videos. Okay, now number two. Okay, so uh, unfortunately, I don't think I'm going to continue this series. I want to restart a new series. I don't even remember. Well, I just looked at the videos real quick. But this was, you know, it was going to be a big series. And that's uh, another part of why maybe I didn't continue. Uh, because... I have to recognize that I am super busy throughout the week in terms of the trading and the managing the firm, the traders, all of that stuff. Uh, I have to do a series where I don't really have to create it all before doing it. Uh, this series, I would have had to sit down, write the whole code, make sure it worked, add everything in it. It was going to take some time. It wasn't a small project. And then I was going to have to record. I'd rather do an uh, easy-to-record series, something I can just sit down and just start recording. Now, it doesn't mean it, it doesn't have to be the same thing. Uh, it could be on this or it could be on something else. So what I'm going to do is as soon as I post this video, five minutes after, I'm going to post another video. And that video is going to be titled, What Should the Next ser Series Be? Okay, so go check under the channel, What Should the Next Series Be? And post in the comments under that video, What You Want the Next Series to Be? And why I don't want to ask here, because I want everybody on the channel to vote. And whatever gets the most votes, I'll do a series on it. And uh, I'll give you guys like four or five days to, you know, decide what you want the series to be on. I'm going to take the top rated one and I'm going to do, I'm going to start the series right away on it. Now, it could be on anything. It could be a trading bot, but, you know, on, you would have to be more specific, like a sentiment analysis trading bot, a trading bot based on technicals. A trading bot that has a user interface uh, or maybe just AI or maybe just uh, genetic evolution or maybe just backtesting. I know this thing that I wanted to do had a lot of moving parts. So let's just take one and 
do a series on it. It'll be easy for me to do, and I can just sit down twice a week, make uh, uh, a video here and there, and uh, that's gonna be feasible. It could be something not coding related. It could be based on technical analysis, fundamental analysis, it could be risk management, it could be about stocks or about cryptocurrencies. Really, it could be about anything, okay? It could be basic, intermediary, or it could be advanced. So just find that video as soon as you see this and go and comment what you wanna see and upvote what you wanna see. Okay, uh, third point. If you want uh, more content, meanwhile, I do have uh, three courses on Udemy. Uh, there are links down in the description below. Uh, you can do them. I think if you use the links below, it's like $10 per course, and they're about uh, in the range of 10 hours each of these courses. So there's some pretty nice content there too. Uh, as I do the this series, you can check those out meanwhile. Okay, now, fourth point, and last point. Let's jump into the code. I, I think that would be something nice. You guys would see what the code looks like and what we've done, so you get an idea of you know, what a trading software looks like and maybe the things I was talking about in the other videos makes a bit more sense. Okay, so let me just log in here. Okay, so I just logged into Visual Studio. Uh, so the code was done in C Sharp and WPF for the user interface. I'll actually run the code so you see what the software looks like and then I'll jump into the code a bit. Uh, so let's run it. So all the traders can use the software to trade cryptocurrencies for us. So that's, our traders use this. It's not available for outside use. Only our traders have uh, access to the software uh, for now. So. Every trader has their credentials, they can log in. So this software was a bit complex to do, okay? It wasn't a, it wasn't a walk in the park. Uh, why? Because when usually you wanna buy a cryptocurrency, you have to go on an exchange. So you have to go, you know, let's say on Binance, and you would be like, yeah, sorry, this I can move that in a second. Uh, so you have to go somewhere on like Binance and then go like, uh, on the exchange and say, okay, well, you know what? I want to buy, what's going on here? Binance, I think Binance is down today. It's so funny because when the exchanges are down, we're actually not down because we're connected to API. Okay, so uh, let's say you want to buy Bitcoin. You can go here and say, okay, well, I want to buy Bitcoin on this exchange is $6,600 uh, $6, on Binance. But the thing is, Bitcoin is trading like right now at, uh, a different price on different exchanges. In cryptocurrencies, there's there are a lot of different exchanges. Example, it's trading on at Binance for 6,473, but you know what? Here it's 6,527, uh, 6,390. So there's different prices on different exchanges. There are light uh, uh, arbitraging opportunities, but it's, it's not a, as simple, it's complicated. Anyways, so what our software does is basically it connects to not only Binance, but a lot of exchanges, and it permits us to trade on all of these exchanges. Okay, that's the really nice thing about it. And uh, sorry, so when you open it, it actually opens up a bunch of windows that you had opened. So it doesn't, it saves the windows. Like I have four windows now, and they're all filled up with order books and stuff like that. You can't see, but I'm gonna move the camera around and I'll show you in a second. Okay, so. It opens something like this in the beginning, and this basically means I'm not connected uh, to a specific server, but uh, you have a bunch of things. You have an order book. So let's say I wanna buy something. Well, which exchange do I wanna buy it on? Binance or Bitfinex or all of these other exchanges? Or which coins do I wanna buy? So let's say I wanna buy, I don't know, uh, Ontology, okay? I wanna buy Ontology using USDT. So I'll go here, I'll select that. Then it tells me that Ontology USDT is available on Binance and Hubie. So the program is smart. It knows all the coins that are trading. It fetches that dynamically from all the exchanges. Uh, uh, you know, the UI isn't very clean because you know we didn't put a lot of time in the UI, but here it gets the order book. And if I wanna buy something or sell it, instead of going on the exchange and logging in, I can just... Okay, sorry, uh, my camera just shut off. I had to replace the battery, but okay, we're here. We're back here. Now, uh, yeah, you can use this basically to send orders if I wanna buy, if I wanna buy a thousand uh, uh, ontology, I can just click send and it sends my order automatically and I have here a order log and I can cancel 
my order from here, or yeah, I could have canceled it from here either. Let's say I wanna sell 5,000 ontologies. Uh, well, I can just click send, my order goes here, it's here, you see my order 5,000 here, and the market's gonna react, some people are gonna jump in front of me. I can just click here and cancel my order and send it to a new price, right? Just by clicking on the price that I want. So that's pretty nice. And there's a bunch of functionalities and I'm gonna show you a bit more. Well, actually, no, it's gonna be too long, but there's a bunch of functionalities in the software. Uh, this was one window, but you have a bunch of other things. You have strategies, you have things for administration, and traders could use this. There's a database, multiple people connect to it simultaneously. There's authentication, there's accounting in the background to know how much each trader made. Uh, it connects to multiple diff exchanges. It, you know, it, it was a complicated software, and it was a headache to build. Uh, but this isn't something that you're gonna build, right? Because you don't wanna do that. So you just wanna do a, a trading bot. Uh, this was basically more of a trading software that people could use to trade. So, you know, what we wanted to include in it isn't exactly the same thing that you would include in your bot. You don't want to really have, maybe you don't even want to have a user interface at all. Uh, but I'll show you how, you know, the, the type of code that you would be looking at. So, uh, you had here your, you know, your API for connecting. You had your database uh, with the things that we're connecting to. Uh, you had Heartbeat, so that's basically because all the platforms are connected with each other, and uh, since they're connected with each other, uh, you know, we have to send the Heartbeat from one uh, platform to the other. There's the model, so that's basically, you know, all these objects, because it's all in object-oriented programming. So let's say a, let's say a level one object. So what's a level one? Well, a level one is gonna basically, you're gonna have your, uh, the symbol, uh, of the coin, the exchange, the bid price, the bid price with taker fee, the ask price, the ask price with taker fee. So I want the bid size, the ask size. So how many people, what's the bid, what's the quantity on the bid, what's the price is, so that's my level one. The high, the low, the volume, the quote volume, the last price, the timestamp, I don't know if you guys can see. Yeah, uh, the change, the open buy orders, the open sell orders, uh, that's if I have an open order on it. Uh, when the order and a bunch of functions so that's just like a level one object you can have like the level two object you can have a bunch of objects so let's say like the balance objects well what's a balance uh or actually i have it maybe here a balance where well, you're gonna have your symbol your exchange the quantity so the, what is the quantity that you have the average price uh the used balance the free balance these are things that relate to cryptocurrencies more you know, an order, so if you, if you wanna send an order, the software sends an order. Well, what's an order? Well, an order is gonna have a price, it can have a filled quantity, it has a status, it has a remaining quantity. Uh, and you know, if I dig deeper and I'm like, well, what's uh, order status? Well, if I go there, well, an order status is gonna be either closed, filled, canceled, partially filled, rejected. So that's how a software is done, basically. And then these things, that's, uh, these are like the models, but then you have the view models, which is like in WPF. I really don't like, I don't wanna say I don't like WPF because it makes it simple. Uh, basically you have your code, which is like your, uh, uh, you know, your level one, level two, your symbol, your stock or your coin, your, your balance, uh, your orders, your trades, all of that stuff, all these objects but you can't see them on the user interface. Now, uh, WPF uses what we call model view view model, MVVM, which is basically, it separates your model from your view. So you have your codes, and then you have your user interface, and you have something in the middle that connects them. So that was our code. Now the view model is basically what connects uh, our view, which is our user interface, to our code. So our code connects with that, and this connects with this. Uh, so that's here, our view model. And again, uh, there's a, way more code than their services we have here, like let's say an execution service, a balance service, order service, uh, risk service, price service. These are things to help our, uh, our software out in doing some calculations. And then you have your actual view, which your view is gonna be the user interface. So, you know, if I have something like the login window, when you log in, I just have to close this so, so we can see it. Well, when you log in, well, here's the login window, not really nice. Uh, the order book, well, what does the order book look like? Well, here it is. So you can actually draw it out. 
and or you can write the code uh, by yourself in XAML, but you can actually draw it out here. So that's really a training software. Now, in the series we're gonna do, we're, we're not gonna do a training software. I don't mind doing something like that. If you want me in the other series to have something that has a user interface, if you want it with WPF, I can do something similar than this, you know? Uh, I'd actually rather, it's, it's, I already have so much code. Uh, and you know what? Let's actually see what it looks like uh, on a trader's platform. So I'll just take the camera here. And let's actually see here. So a trader is gonna have a usually four screens like this. And basically they're gonna be trading on the software. So you, uh, so you see all these windows here? These are basically order books. Uh, like the one I just opened earlier. So they're gonna have a bunch of order books and they're also gonna have time of sales, right? So you can see all the orders, all the trades that happened. And they're gonna basically have that on multiple uh, screens and they're gonna have their other things on other screens, like their charts and uh, usually you're gonna have one screen or two screens for order books and time of sales and then you're gonna have your charts on uh, another window and then you might have you know a, a few excel sheets that do some calculations uh, on another uh, uh, sheet so all of this to say that this is why i was busy because we were basically just uh you know writing the software and uh, uh it's been it was a lot of work and there was so many bugs you know doing a bot for yourself is completely different than doing a software that multiple users use and there's simultaneous connections. You know, we have money on several exchanges and then we have multiple traders trading that same account simultaneously. So you have to manage all of that simultaneously and you have to be pretty quick. And then you have a lot of strategies that are running in the background. So it's a hassle. Okay. So that being said, uh, again, my apologies for uh, stopping this series right here. Uh, I'm extremely busy with so many things, but like I've said, I'm gonna start a new series fresh. Go vote on what you want the subject to be. A clean, short, sweet subject. Uh, and uh, it could be a trading bot. It could be, you know, uh, something on AI. It could be something on uh, backtesting, uh, getting data, cleaning it and backtesting. Could be on anything. But uh, I'm ready to start it, so uh, go on the channel, find the video called What Should the Next Series Be About? And vote right now, and I'll see you guys in the next video.